Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be watching some angry video again. Uh, this is going to be episode 88 and it's going to be Sword Quest. So uh, let's check this out, shall we? Let's go. He's going to take you back to the past to play the shitty games and suck ass. He'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diarrhea dump in his ear. He'd rather eat the rotten asshole of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer. He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Atari He's the angry video game nerd. Once upon a time, video games were more than games. They were adventures. I'm talking about the Sword Quest games for the Atari 2600. They were based on the four ancient elements of the cosmos. Sword Quest Earthworld, Fireworld, Waterworld, we're not talking about the Kevin Costner movie, <laughs> and at last, there was going to be Airworld. In these games, the player navigates through a series of mystical chambers in search of hidden treasures, but you weren't just playing a game, you were on a real adventure searching for real treasures. Atari was giving out prizes, and we're not talking about cheap plastic little things you get from a McDonald's Happy Meal, no man, this was real stuff. Here's how it worked. First, you'd have to buy the games, which mm. all came out one at a time. If you became a club member, they'd mail you a t-shirt along with the games as soon as they got released. Not to mention, each game came with a poster and a DC comic book. Nice. The games were all about finding clues, so you'd write down all the clues and send them to Atari. Those who found the most would go to Atari headquarters to compete in the finals. Here they'd have custom made versions of the game, which the players had 90 minutes to finish. Whoever finished first would win the prize. The winner of Earthworld got a talisman made of 18 karat solid gold studded wow. with 12 diamonds and the birthstones of the 12 zodiac signs. Damn. The winner of Fireworld got a chalice made of platinum and gold studded with diamonds, rupees, sapphires, pearls, and green jade. Fuck the winner me. of Waterworld would get a crown made of gold decorated with diamonds, rubies, <laughs> sapphires, and aquamarines. Whoa. The winner of Airworld would get a philosopher's stone, a large <laughs> piece of white jade encased in an 18 karat gold box adorned with emeralds, rupees, and diamonds. Wow. Damn. According to Atari's advertising campaign, these prizes were valued at $25,000 each. But that Whoa. wasn't all. The four winners would come back for one final competition, and the winner of that would win a jewel-encrusted sword with an 18-karat gold handle <laughs> and a silver blade covered with diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, and rubies. The sword was valued at $50,000. <laughs> in total, Fuck that's $150,000 worth of treasures. Uh -oh. And this was in 1982 and 83, so you can balance that out. Mm. Wow. Not since the medieval times have I heard of a treasure quest of this magnitude. Mm. It gets you really excited to play the games, so that's what I call a promotion. You'd be wearing your Sword Quest t-shirt with your comic books and posters, drinking out of your gold chalice mm. with your crown, philosopher's stone and sword, and not to mention your Sword Quest video gaming cartridges exclusive from Atari. <laughs> Well, too bad the contest is all over, so there's not much point in playing the games today. If you picked up one of these games right now with no instruction manual and no explanation, you wouldn't have any idea what to do. <laughs> Every time you go to the next room, it sounds like an explosion. That's what's so great about Atari. Something as simple as going through a door is an event. <laughs> <laughs> Every room's a different color, and there's no end. It just keeps going and going. If you look at the manual, you'll see that each room represents a sign from the zodiac, and if you keep moving, you'll come around full circle. But there's only so many colors, so it's easy to confuse Aries with Libra or Capricorn with Leo. Each room has a hidden chamber where you find treasures, but sometimes before you get to the treasure, you have to pass through a nuclear waterfall or jump on laser rafts. These kind of games, you gotta use a lot of imagination. <laughs> when you get to a treasure chamber, you can pick up items or drop them. By putting the right combination of items in a certain room, you'll trigger a clue. 16 four. Whoa! Now what could that mean? Hmm. Could it be a manual 16, pages? Four. 
The comic book. Oh, the comic book, yeah. Pages 16? Page 16, yeah, that's panel what I'm thinking. Four. Panel 4. I don't see anything. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. I thought it would be in the book, but. Page 8. Wow, that's There's pretty cool. There's ten hidden words, and they're supposed to make a sentence, but five of them are bogus. The only way to figure out which are the right words is to find a subliminal hint on the first page. Damn. The words prime and number are a different color than the rest, so this means you only use the clues that are prime numbers. Mm. Let me tell you, in 1982, people had a lot of time on their hands <laughs> and a lot of creativity to figure this out. Out of 5,000 entries, only eight gamers got the right sentence. The winner was 20-year-old Stephen Bell. Good work, man. Wow, good job on the that. The second game, Fireworld, was basically the same principle, except this time the rooms are laid out to follow the Tree of Life. The only things that are very different from the first game are the action sequences. What are we doing here? Hitting birds with a pole? <laughs> Throwing knives? Now you're actually steering knives into a, a turkey club sandwich. This part, you're like a black eagle shooting bullets at snakes. All with glorious Atari sound effects. I think this game was a little easier than Earthworld, because this time, over 50 gamers found all the clues. So Atari had sort of a tiebreaker, where they made everyone write down what they liked about the game. <laughs> Damn, that's a good game. Gee whiz, I sure love that game. And somehow, based on those answers, they narrowed it down to 50 contestants. Michael Rideout was the final winner and received the Golden Chalice. The third game, Waterworld, is when the shit hit the fan. The infamous video game crash of 1983 was taking effect, and Waterworld was released in a limited quantity, making this an extremely rare game. It had only seven rooms, significantly less than the previous games. This time, it was based on the chakra structure. Appropriately, its action scenes all had something to do with water. Either you're trying to swim around sharks, dodge squids, or hop on icebergs. Mm. The contest never happened. Atari's financial problems led them to sell the company and pull the plug on the whole thing. Damn. The fourth game, Airworld, is just what it is. Air. Uh. It never got made, though a prototype has been rumored and even hoaxed. It's a very sad end to what could have been the greatest gaming event in history. Mm. An adventure series with rooms based off mythology came with comic books, a chance to win real treasures, and then it all vanished. The biggest mystery of all is whatever happened to the remaining treasures. Eyewitness accounts and pictures prove that they all existed because they were on display during the competition. But where are they now? The guy who bought Atari was a guy named Jack Trammell. Some comments online from people in the business have said that they've seen the sword hanging in Trammell's living room. There's no pictures or any hard evidence to support this, but if he does have the sword, it's most likely he has the crown and the Philosopher's Stone as well. Hmm. Somebody's gotta find out. The real sword quest is the quest for that sword and the other treasures. They belong in the hands of gamers who earn them. You know, everybody who put those games in their Ataris had a chance of winning. It was something to dream about, but that dream's been thrown down the toilet. It's 30 years later, but I say the contest must go on. Finish the last game. You can't have earth, fire, and water without air. The balance of the cosmos must be restored. The <laughs> true bearer of that sword must be found. The kingdom of nerdum depends on it. <laughs> Damn. All right, let's uh, pause it there. Um, that was, wow, that was shocking. I never knew anything uh, like that happened. I mean, so many, so much gold and diamond and rubies. I mean, that's insane. Uh, and so much money. I mean, today and age, nothing like that would happen. Um, today, it's just like a, if you ha go into a competition or something like that, you will get like a, f or in a giveaway or something, you maybe get, get an Xbox One or a Nintendo Switch, uh, you know, just some, like, just a console. Um, it's nothing like that on that scale, because uh, that was just shocking. I, I mean, I wish I was alive back then, because damn, whew, 
you know, I would I would totally try go for that sword because that sword looked awesome. <laughs> but yeah, if you liked this video, make sure to give a like and uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my com uh, content and uh, comment down below what else you would like me to react to. That was a really good episode and shocking and insightful. So yeah, see you guys in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>